Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most magical cats in the world, the Palace's cat. This cat is known for its unique appearance, which has led to it being called the cat with the human face. It has a round head with large expressive eyes and its ears are shaped like a heart. Its fur is thick and fluffy and it has a long bushy tail. The Palace's cat has a long and fascinating history. It was first discovered in Central Asia by the German naturalist Peter Simon Pallas in the 18th century. In China, the Pallas's cat is also known as Tursun. Why is the Pallas's cat called Tu Xiang in China? This is actually an interesting story that we will discuss with our viewers in the video. The Pallas's cat is a solitary animal that lives in the steppes and deserts of Central Asia. It is an excellent hunter and its diet consists of small mammals, birds, and reptiles. The palace's cat is a threatened species and its numbers are declining due to habitat loss and hunting. In this video, I'll be taking a closer look at the palace's cat. I'll discuss its appearance, behavior, and habitat. I'll also talk about its history and the threats it faces. Today, let's join the world's most to discover the most magical cat in the world. It's a cat that's not well known, but you're sure to be smitten. One, the body shape of the palace's cat. The palace's cat is a small wildcat native to Central Asia. It is known for its distinctive appearance, which has been described as shocking and surprising. When it curls up, it looks like a large ball of fur and it has a, a short, thick tail. Its face is often described as serious or fierce and it has been called the angriest cat in the world. However, it can also you know, have a confused or dazed expression. Overall, the palace's cat has a somewhat bored or apathetic demeanor as if it doesn't care about anything. This is perhaps what has earned it a large following of fans. Two, mm -hmm. the face of the palace's cat. One of those striking things about the palace's cat is its face. Many people think that the face of the palace's cat looks like a human face. There are three main reasons for this. First, the face of the palace's cat is flat with the nose and mouth not protruding much. This is consistent with the characteristics of a human face. Uh, second, the ears of the palace's cat are not on top of the head, but rather on the sides, and they are not as pointed as the ears of other cats. Both the position and the outline are somewhat similar to humans. Third, the eyes of the palace's cat. The pupils of other cats are slits. The palace's cat is different. The palace's cat has round pupils, which are the same as human pupils. It is said that these are the reasons why the palace's cat looks a bit like a human. Of course, the palace's cat is still a cat, and it has many other features that are characteristic of cats. For example, it has sharp claws and teeth for hunting, and it has a thick coat of fur to keep it warm in the cold winters of Central Asia. But the face of the palace's cat is undoubtedly one of its most distinctive features. It is a face that is both cute and a bit strange, and it is sure to turn heads wherever the palace's cat goes. Three, classification of palace's cat. Since palace's cat is a cat, we need to first understand what kind of cat it is. In the biological classification system, Pallas's cat belongs to the genus Autocolobus, which is the only species in this genus. So what is its closest relative? The answer is the genus Prionellorus, which includes common species such as Bengal cat, fishing cat, rusty spotted cat, flat-headed cat, and Borneo Bay cat. Here we will compare it to the fishing cat. Although the two are closely related, Pallas's cat has very different habits from the other species in the genus Prionellurus. The fishing cat, of course, needs to go into the water to catch fish. It is the type of cat that cannot live without water. The other species of Prionellurus also mostly live in forests, especially in moist areas of South and Southeast Asia, which are most suitable for them. However, Pallas's cat is a completely different story. It is a master of the high mountains such as King Hai Tibet Plateau, the Iranian Plateau, the Caucasus Mountains, and the Mongolian Plateau. These are all places out in the boonies. They are cold oxygen deficient and have a lack of biological diversity. Only the toughest can survive in these harsh conditions. Four, <laughs> origin, the name Palace's Cat. I think a lot of viewers are already wondering why it's called Palace's Cat. Let me explain. The name Palace's Cat is in honor of German naturalist Peter Simon Pallas. Pallas was born in Berlin, Germany in 1741. He was a distinguished zoologist and geographer. He conducted several expeditions in the Russian Empire and first described the Pallas's cat in 1776. The Pallas's cat was originally called Manul, which is a Mongolian word meaning rabbit, 
Palace thought that the palace's cat's fur color and behavior were similar to those of a rabbit, so he named it Manuel. In 1811, French zoologist Georges uh, covered him in the palace's cat, Odocolobus Manuel. The scientific name Odocolobus is Greek and means bent ears, which is one of the characteristics of the palace's cat. In the late 19th century, the name palace's cat gradually placed the name Manumwe. This name is in honor of palace's discovery and description of the palace's cat. However, I found that the Chinese name for the palace's cat is quite interesting. In China, it is called Tursum. Tursum comes from the Turkic language and means stop. The story goes that in the past, nomadic people would shout Tursum when they saw the palace's cat in the wild. The palace cat will actually stop and look back as if it knows someone is calling it. In a sense, it even recognizes his name. Over time, his, uh, his Chinese name became Tursan. It's a very interesting way of naming things, isn't it? If you see him in the wild, in the future, he can also try to yell Tursan to see if he will stop. Five, habitat and food of Palace's cat. In the previous section, we discussed the origin of the name Palace's cat. Now let's talk about the habitat and food of Palace's cat. Palace's cat is mainly distributed in Central Asia, West Asia, South Asia, and East Asia, including China, Russia, Mongolia, India, and Durian. They prefer to live in grasslands, mountains, and rocky areas at an altitude of 2,000 to 5,000 meters. The main food of Palace's cat is rodents, such as pikas, voles, ground squirrels, and marmots. They have very sophisticated hunting skills and they can use their short legs and flat heads to quietly approach their prey, then suddenly attack. Uh, six, can Palace's cat be kept as a pet? Can Palace's cats be kept as pets? The answer is no. This does not mean that you can keep them at home, but even in professional zoos, Palace cats are not very successful. Nowadays, there are only a few zoos in the world that keep Palace's cats in the US. According to the information I found on the internet, there is a Palace's cat at the Smithsonian National Zoological Park and at Utah's Hogle Zoo. So if you see a Palace's cat on TikTok, it is probably from Utah's Hogle Zoo. I also found out that there is a Palace's cat in Signing Safari Park in China. And, and according to my information, the Chinese Palace's cat has a funny name, Sun Four Second. He is from the Zining Wild Animal Park in China. Why is he called Sun Four Second? I heard that his first mating time was only about four seconds, so he was ridiculed mercilessly and became famous and the most famous palace's cat in China. Sadly, in October 2022, Sun Four Second got something stuck in his throat and died of asphyxiation. However, this Sun Four Second, like leave one off bring in 2021, he gave birth to a little palace called Sun Dai Nang with another palace called Sun Shang Ziang. I don't know how this name was chosen, but this is the first palace's cat to be bred and raised in captivity in China. You can see how difficult it is to breed a palace, right? Much harder than breeding a lion or a tiger. So what is the reason? The current thinking is that it may be a problem with the immune system of the palace's cat because their natural habitat is at high altitudes or in very remote places. There are fewer bacteria and viruses, so their immune systems have never had to fight big battles. Once they come into a captive environment, all sorts of diseases come in and many of the childhood diseases that are common in domestic cats can be fatal to Palace's cats. That's why the premature death rate of young captive bred Palace's cats is very high. In recent years, with more experience and better breeding conditions, at least a few more have survived. Since, in fact, right, Palace's cats is not only a headache for zoos, it is also a problem for them when they are bred in the wild. Seven, we know Palace's cat in the wild. Palace's cats are solitary animals and most of their habitats are located in sparsely populated areas. Therefore, it is difficult for Palace's cats to find mates when they want to mate. In addition, the female Palace's cat has a very short breeding window coming into heat only once a year for only one to two days. If you don't meet one in these two days, you'll have to wait until next year. However, as long as mating is successful, the survival rate of young Palace's cats in the wild is still good. They usually mate in early spring and have kittens in early summer with each litter producing three to six kittens, Palace's cat cubs are able to live on their own before winter sets in. Since Palace's cat's hunting ability is very strong, young Palace's cats basically do not have to worry about starving to death. Whether they can live to adulthood depends mainly on their natural enemies. Palace's cat has a lot of natural enemies, including snow leopards, Tibetan mastiffs, wolves, eagles, etc. Palace's cat can't beat any of them. So their main defense is to hide. Young Palace's cats usually don't leave 
the pile of rocks that usually play around nearby and freeze when there is danger. When adult palaces cats go out to hunt and encounter danger, they do the same thing they always do, pretend to be rocks. Whether in the snow or grass, they will lie on their backs with their five bodies and remain motionless for a long time. Sometimes they won't even move when they're covered by snow. So they really look like a rock. The, the BW sanctionation trick seems to be Palace's cat's signature technique. Eight, Palace cat species and survival threats. In point four above, we mentioned that the Palace's cat is named after the person who first described it. In 1776, German naturalist Peter Simon Pallas first described the Pallas's cat near Lake Baco. However, what Pallas actually found was a subspecies of the Pallas's cat. The same subspecies found on Lake Baikal, in Mongolia, in Siberia, and in northeastern Inner Mongolia. The Pallas's cat of Lake Baikal, Mongolia, Siberia, and northeastern Inner Mongolia are all this subspecies. Two other subspecies have been discovered since then, the Highland Palace's cat on the Tibetan Plateau in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, and the Ruddy Palace's cat in Central Asia and West Asia. This brings the total number of subspecies to three. The International Union for Conservation of Nature A Use currently classifies the Palace's cat as non-threatened with an estimated population of 58,000 individuals as of 2019. However, the population trend is thought to be declining. What are the threats to the palace's cat? As we mentioned earlier, hunting was once a major threat. The palace's cat's fur is dense and long, and it was once very popular in the market. More than 10,000 palace's cats were hunted each year. However, the trade was banned after the cat was granted legal protection. Today, the main threat to the palace's cat is habitat loss. For example, some grasslands have been used to exterminate rats and mice, which has reduced the number of prey available to the palace's cat. Well, that's all for this video. I, I hope you enjoyed our introduction to the palace's cat. Um, please let us know in the comment section if you have any questions or feedback. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.